Hi everyone. How's it going? Welcome to episode 23. Number 23. The, it's the Ninja Chop for Analysis Ninjas out there watching Analytics TV. And this is our special 2011 holiday episode. Yeah, that's we it. We got some really great questions. And we've got questions from every place in Nick's family tree. We've got a place where his father was born, where his <laughs> mom was raised, and where he lives now. And we've got, this is going to be so much fun. All right. So, um, with that, let's, let's go. Get, let's go. Uh, the first question is a tough one here. This one's from Matt Clark in Gargrave, North Yorkshire in the UK. It's now a legal requirement in the EU to get permission before sending cookies. Google Analytics without accurate e-commerce tracking data would be useless. Does Google have plans to provide a server-side workaround since PHP APIs for posting data already exist? So it's a good, good question, Matt. Um, along with other companies like Microsoft and Yahoo and Omniture and WebTrends, the team at Google is working with the various entities in the EU to figure out what the implications are because it's uh, some uh, clarity is missing as to what applies in individual countries across the entire EU, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so at the moment, that process has not concluded. Um, but when the process is concluded, we will post um, um, our guidelines, et cetera, on the analytics blog, analytics.blogspot.com. And so, so stay tuned there. Uh, I did want to emphasize that um, the word workaround is very sensitive in this scenario. So um, uh, hopefully there, there are no sort of workarounds. Um, Google, as well as all the other companies, are going to follow the laws that are uh, applicable in the individual country. Uh, but as to what they are and what the implications are, we'll post them on our blog, as will our peer companies in the industry. So look for that. All right. So the next question is for you here, Avinash, from Florian, France. Hello, ninjas. I like watching bounce rate on my landing page reports, but can I really trust this metric if I've got a content website? Do you recommend adding a time limit to get a better balance rate with set timeout? So this is the controversial co answer, I think, because both Nick and I, when we discussed how to answer all the questions, got into a tiny little tiff trying to figure out what to do here. So my personal point of view is that you can't actually just rely on time as a barometer. Remember, in Google Analytics, as well as the Web Analytics Association standard for bounce rate, is any session with one page view, and that's the standard, and, and that's fine. Um, the challenge with time is, you know, if, if people open a page and leave it open in a tab, or just leave a page open in the main browser window, and go eat lunch, what, what would you infer? You know, if you get an event every two minutes, three minutes, 19 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, it keeps incrementing. But if, you know, I open an article and read it at the end of the day, um, what was that, like nine hour view of that particular page? It, it's, it's hard to infer information when none exists. So I am personally ever so slightly uh, for not using time in this scenario. But our good friend Nick has a fabulous, fabulous right. way in which you can seek information where there is some information, and hence infer if it was a bounce visit or not. Nick, please. So the idea with the bounce, right, is that if somebody comes to your site and immediately leaves, it's a bounce, right? right. Uh, and the problem with content is people are looking for something and they, they might be reading it, um, but there's no interaction there. Um, so one idea is if it's a long article, most people have to scroll. And so if there's an interaction that you can track for when people are scrolling, you know that they're actually engaging. Correct. And, and if you think about it, like what's the difference between clicking on the page versus clicking on the scroll bar? Correct. You're still it, clicking. It, it's, a, it's a hit. It's a hit. Yes. It's an interaction. So, so you just track it. And so the idea is if you can track when people are scrolling down the page, then you know that they are interacting with your content and it shouldn't be a bounce. There you go. So Nick is going to post a link uh, or, or some advice that will help you figure out how to add that functionality so Google Analytics will record that hit that will come from people scrolling. And that's a real action by somebody right. rather than a page left open for 900 hours. Um, and, and I think it's a fabulous yeah. idea from Nick. Uh, so look for that in the blog post on our blog that has this video in it, Web Analytics episode number 23. Just search for it. And, and you'll see the technical know-how about how to do that. Sounds good. Um, question for you here, Avinash. Uh, hi, Nick and Avinash. Can we know where our visitors are going after our website? It might be useful. And this is from Rahul in Mumbai, India. There. I, I grew up there. So that's right where you there. came up. There, there you go. go. <laughs> um, so there are two, two things here that I want to separate out. The first one is, um, take my blog as an example. So you'll come to my blog, and I have a bunch of exit links. So, so two exit links that I really care about 
are the links that go to my books, Webantics 2.0, Webantics and RID, both go to Amazon. And so I want to track that how many people left my blog to go there. And the second link I have is to Markimotive, my startup. Um, and so what I've done with Nick's help is those links are encoded to fire off an event when people leave the website. And that way, I know exactly how many people are clicking on links on my blog that link to other places in the world. So I know where they're going next mm -hmm. in terms of where I want them to go. So that's category one, totally trackable. The second category is, what if Nick just comes to the blog, reads an article, and after that, he just goes to the browser window and types foxnews.com because he's a big fan of <laughs> Fox News. And, and so if he does that, that is a behavior that is not available in a web analytics tool because that piece of data is happening inside the browser and not available to Omniture, Google Analytics, et cetera. In that scenario, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the options might be in India, um, but if you're in the US, a tool like compete.com uh, compete allows you to get, use competitive intelligence data to know where people go after they leave your site. Um, and if you use another tool called Hitwise, also a competitive intelligence tool, it tells you where people go after they visit your website. If you use the Google tool called the Google Ad Planner, this is a tool by Google, it doesn't tell you exactly where people go after they leave your site, but it actually gives you uh, affinity. So it tells you what are the other types of websites in that are similar to yours that are visited by people who visit your site. Mm -hmm. And so for my blog, you it will you type in my blog and it'll say, oh, people would visit the web analytics association.com, uh, Nick is awesome.com, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the category two using competitive intelligence to answer this question. It's a bit complex, um, but that should sort of help you out uh, in order to do this analysis. Great, great. Uh, we've got a question for you from Wooter in Netherlands, Nick. And it says, hi, ninjas. I want to measure the behavior of returning converted customers, customer lifetime value. Therefore, I set a custom war at a visitor level. After the second purchase of the customer, is this the best method to measure CLV? So leaving aside the, this idea of the metric CLV, um, how do you think, is, is this the best way, Nick, to measure repeated visits by the same person that might end in a transaction? Yeah, it, it, it's really difficult right now um, within analytics. And it's something that we're working on to make a lot better. Um, just we don't have anything at this show right now to discuss about that. Um, so right now, you can use a, a visitor level custom, custom variable. Level. Um, one of the recommendations that I've done um, for this in the past is to create some sort of unique ID, some sort of uh, random number in the timestamp. And just set that, it, it's not personal, it's completely anonymous. Mm -hmm. It's just a unique ID. Yes. And set that as a custom variable, visitor level custom variable, in the actual custom variable. And then when you create a report, you can say for that ID, show me the total revenue over time for the date range that you've selected. And that's one way you can get kind of the CLV metric for these IDs that happen to be for that visitor over the lifetime. Um, one of the challenges then you might look at is, well, like what session are they doing these different transactions and how does that kind of look? Um, and there is a session count that you can use to figure out what session they're on. Um, but one of the things that you might not get is like what purchase that they're on. You know, are they on the first purchase, the second purchase, the third purchase? And for that, you can actually put the purchase number in another custom variable and then you'd have those metrics within Google Analytics. So there's a couple ways that you can get that information. Um, and so, you know, that's how you would send the data to analytics. You can use custom reportings to view it. And again, if, you, if, you're, if you're interested and you're watching the show, we highly recommend using one of our partners um, because they can help configure this and make sure that you're getting the data that you actually need. Exactly. And, and on the second part of computing customer lifetime value, I'm sort of a big fan because of all the other pieces of data that you'll need in order to do truly customer lifetime value across multiple channels that you have access to for it, you to do it outside of your web analytics tools like uh, Google Analytics, Omniture, Web Trends, et cetera. Um, and I'll, I'll send Nick an article that um, he can link to that shows you how to optimally compute customer lifetime value. And it has a downloadable spreadsheet with some models that my friend David Hughes had created. Um, and so go, go read that post and, and that will be very helpful to you purely from the perspective of computing the metric customer lifetime value. Um, and so we'll link to that as well. Yeah, sounds good. Um, here's a question for you, Avinash from Maggie, uh, from Sofia, Bulgaria. So this is where my dad was born. There we go. Um, can you explain the discrepancy between time to purchase section in e-commerce reports 
zero day and one visit showing higher numbers compared to time lag and path length in MCF. Gold transaction, zero day, and one interaction yeah. showing. So it's the difference between the e-commerce time to purchase and the time lag in multi-channel funnels. Correct, correct. So, so, um, so the reports that uh, Maggie is referring to is in the e-commerce section, we have two reports called days at, to purchase and visits to purchase. And those reports are exclusively tied to an e-commerce transaction. So if we take um, marksandspencers.co.uk, a, a really nice British retailer, uh, sells great underwear, by the way, um, and then you go and buy the underwear, um, that transaction is going to get recorded as an e-commerce transaction, and the days and visits to purchase reports are just reporting what happens to those e-commerce transactions. But the other thing you can do with marksandspencer.com is you can go and write a review for a, the underwear, right? You can write a review, um, you can sign up for an email promotion, etc. And those all would not, though all of those activities would be set as goals, and they wouldn't be set as e-commerce transactions. And so when you look at days and visits to purchase, it is exclusively tied to e-commerce transactions. And in the multi-channel funnel reports, when you look at the time lag and path length report, it includes goals in mm -hmm. as, as sort of conversions. And so of course they're reporting completely different data and that's why you're seeing a very differing metrics. Um, my latest blog post on best KPIs discusses this a bit more, the, the difference between time to purchase and time lag and path length report. So check that out for a bit more detail, but that's the difference. E-commerce only for e-commerce, time lag in multi-channel funnels for goals and e-commerce. So that's why you're seeing different data. Okay, uh, great answer. Here's another question to you from Quift in Sweden. How would I track a site with multiple domains and subdomains? For example, shop.com, m.shop.com, and m.shop.sc. You have the same tracking code on every site and use different filters to analyze the data, but the filters do not cache transaction data. Yeah, so quick, I mean, cross-domain and uh, subdomain tracking is, is one of the most complex things you'll do in any web analytics tool. It doesn't matter which one you're using. And, and, and there isn't enough information here to figure out what the optimal answer for you is. And we'll link to a couple of articles in the analytics help area that tell you what the trade-offs are that you'll be making by using method one, method two, method three. Uh, but additionally, if, if this is sort of a serious effort, I, I highly, highly recommend that you work with a Google Analytics certified professional. Um, you'll find a list at www.bit.ly forward slash GAAC. So if you just go to the URL, you'll find a list. We've got some really great guys in Sweden who can help you do this in a really good way. But uh, it's such a complex thing for you to do. And it's important that you work with a partner who knows what they're doing, so you'll do this right. Great. So Nick, here's a question for you from David in Los Angeles. Yep. And he says, um, he's asking, is there a way to do funnel visualization within an API, say using Next Analytics or GA Data Grabber? Both of those, of course, are, are um, uh, applications available using our API. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so, Nick, is there, is there a way to do funnels? Yeah, actually, these, both of these solutions are plugins for Excel that allow you to get all the data in Google Analytics directly in Excel. So it's like a really simple way if you're using Excel uh, to, to automate workflow. Um, so there are, um, the idea is there's two dimensions called previous page and next page, and they pretty much show you for a particular page, where do people go next? And you can use those together along with the various filters to say how many people went to, from page A to page B, and then from page B to B, C, and C to D, and so forth. Um, and there's a solution called actually Patty Track that actually. I love it. Yeah. I love it. They actually do all the calculations and API work for you, and they allow you to apply segments and go retroactively to all your different paths. And so if you wanted to use a tool like this, you can do it and do all your own calculations, and you can work with the people ah, who do it. Patty or track. you could use Patty Track and they've already done it. So and, a couple the, options, yeah. The thing that is great, never do final visualization in Google Analytics. It's just not great. Should, we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't say that. We have the Damn new visualization. <laughs> um, no, we've got <laughs> Patty Track, and the, 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 the thing that I like about Patty Track uh, a lot is that two important features. Number one, it is retroactive. So when you create a funnel, you can actually go back and apply to historical data, which you can't in the mm -hmm. data feature. Mm -hmm. Second thing, also, anybody who knows me, love segmentation, is that Patty Track allows you to segment funnels. So not only will you be able to create a standard funnel, but mm -hmm. you'll be able to see what the funnel flow and abandonment rate looks like for AdWords versus Bing. You'll be able to look at um, the social media versus you know, a particular keyword, Nick Rocks. You know? 
Um, so historical retroactive data available, segmentation. That's why you, you don't want to mess around with this stuff. It's a very good tool. Um, so use www.paditrack, P-A-D-I-T-R-A-C-K. The other thing I'm going to say, if, if you really like using the API, because I know a lot of <laughs> viewers like using the API, um, we, we don't expose final visualization. Um, and so there's definitely, we have a, a way that we're tracking feature requests. Yes. And so we definitely encourage you to vote on this so that way we can prioritize this and Higher. hopefully expose yes. it. Because we, we actually release a lot of really good final visualization reports in the product, uh, but you can't access those through the API. So you're using yes. these other tools. Correct. So. One of the options is we could actually start exposing maybe that data if you like to get your data through the API, and maybe that's just a great experience overall. And so, so you limited, beautiful, gorgeous people from around the world have a lot of power, because if you vote, your features will get prioritized higher than everybody in the world, yeah. world who is not cool enough to watch this episode. At least that's what we try to do for developers <laughs> on our APIs. Here's a question for you, Nick, and it says, hi guys, are non-interactive events considered Hits, like default events, page views, social interactions, e-commerce item transactions. What types of tracking is subject to quota, 500 hits per session, one hit per five seconds after first and per visit others? Anyway, so from Johan in Melbourne, Australia. A, so uh, are those hits or not? Yeah, it's a great question. Everything that you send to Google Analytics is a hit. Exactly. Uh, and then we actually classify those hits into different hit types yes. and whether they're interaction and not. Um, but the fact that you're sending data inbound to our servers is a hit Very and they're good. restricted to quota. Perfect. Great. Uh, another one for you from Wooter in Netherlands. Uh, hi Ninjas, I would like to get insight into referral traffic from my blog, site.nl forward slash blog, to my work web shop, the e-commerce mm -hmm. site, site.nl. For this I use separate tracking code and set cookie path for my blog. Is this the right method to see internal referral traffic? So essentially, they, they, their website is called site.nl, and the blog is on site.nl right. forward slash blog. So I'm seeing the word analyze. internal referral traffic, and yeah, it's on the same site. So these are, some people call them high house ads. Um, some people are trying to do cross promotions. Um, we, we answered this in a previous uh, mm -hmm. episode that um, you know I think one of the good solutions out there is to use, you could use events, but we got a lot of feedback. A lot of people like to use um, internal site search reports to actually get this analysis. Yeah, and uh, We'll link to it. We'll link to it. And just, just to say to a point, you know, I was working with the Chrome Web Store team, and I actually got them to use internal site nice. search to do we're, it. We're eating our own dog food. So we're eating our own <laughs> dog food at Google. So that worked out well, well for their, uh, to know how much billion, uh, millions to spend on marketing. There you go. Another one for you, Nick, from Joshua in Israel. Um, looking at dimension equal page level custom var in a custom report, Google Analytics treats visits as entrances rather than sessionizing the data. Why is that? Compared to the UI's custom var report and compared to advanced segments. Uh, in my humble opinion, entrances and visits should be different in all cases. What do you, what do you think, Nick? Um, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, it's an interesting question because there's a lot of questions in like three sentences. Um, <laughs> So visits are always incremented on the first hit of the session regardless of the hit type, right? Entrances are always incremented on the first page type hit of the session. Um, when you're looking at page level custom variables in a report, and then you have a higher level, like a session level metric, for example, visits and entrances are more session level, you're gonna run into some weird problems because the numbers won't actually add up properly, especially when you're looking across all the pages. Because what you're looking at is for a particular page, only when it was in the first hit of a session, will it be incremented for visits? Or if in this case, because all page level custom variables, as long as you're only reporting pages and they're not being set for events, all the entrances will be incremented because they will be the page, uh, first page of the session. So that's why they're the same. Um, and the reason why they're not sessionized is because if you want to sessionize the data, um, the way to do that is to create, um, how would you do that? You'd set the dimension as an advanced segment and apply it to the visits report, and then you would say, when this value was in the session, show me all visits for it. And so I think if you apply it to the advanced segment, you can get the sessionized values. So if, if you were ever wondering why Nick is here on the show with me, that's the reason. I didn't understand anything he said. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, oh, okay. Yoshua, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a good answer for you on some of the, your answers, like like the first one about when you need an answer that doesn't really have a lot of substance. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, there you so, go. So okay. here's a oh, this, okay. Here's this a is from our hometown of Mountain View. Yeah, these are the guys who are like next door. We should just have them live on the show. <laughs> 
Week over week compare. Anyone know how to compare this Monday yeah. to last Monday grid? For some reason, I cannot find it, figure it out. Closely yours, DS. Yes, so David, um, uh, in, the, in the UI, of course, it is very difficult to do this. Uh, but of course, the simplest answer uh, in terms of this is to just use the API. I mean, we've got an API that allows you to create any kind of custom time bucketing and run any kinds of analysis you want. One of the tools that Nick and I have recommended in the past is Excellent Analytics. Yep. It's a wonderful tool. It costs a little bit of money, uh, substantially less than any web analytics tool. Excellent, Next, GA Data Grabber, they're all and, good. And yep. all of these tools will allow you to do this very easily. So check out our API and our Google Analytics Apps Gallery. Yeah, absolutely. We'll link to that to make it easy to find them. Um, question here from David in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, is there a delay between the time when one sets up filters and profiles, such as IP include or exclude? And how soon does GA obey those filters? If so, for how long? And is there a time delay between setting up a new profile and GA pulling data to that profile? So David, the answer is very simple. The filters get applied as soon as you hit submit. They get applied. But you should know that the data then that starts getting collected, it will get processed. So it takes a few minutes for it to then show up in your reports. But the filter gets applied immediately. If, if you're waiting for the data to show up with the filters applied, it's simply the processing that is happening, and it takes a few minutes. Yeah. GA now has a right now report. It's <laughs> literally right now. Uh, but the data that you're looking for uh, is usually available in less than 20 minutes or something. Depends I think. on the size of the site, yeah. There you go. But just whatever the delay is, if any, it's because of processing, not because of the, uh, the delay in applying the filter. It gets applied instantly. Great. And uh, is that, oh, that's it, that's, that's it, it, that's so it. That so we, we, I did want to quickly run through a few different people and thank them for various things. Uh, Sevan from Turkey has a really great feature request connected to uh, allowing admins to delete themselves. It's, I think it's a delightful something. That I we, have a feature request for that as well. There you go, so Sevan, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and we've got a question from Len in Scotland who asked a very specific questions about unique visitors and visits. And the, the problem is there isn't enough information Len, to answer your question, but if you email me a specific screenshot and, and tell me what the profile, et cetera, is or your site URL, uh, we'll try and look it up. Uh, and that brings us to a very good sort of question is, a lot of these questions are very specific, but there isn't, in the two or three lines that, that are posted in the moderator website, in your question, it's not enough information for us to make any um, sort of uh, guidance, mm -hmm. uh, so we apologize for that. So, so the solution is, uh, in the future, if you do have some very specific question, please post uh, some screenshot and link to it. Exactly. So we at least know like where in the entire product that we're trying to answer this question for. There you go. So find yeah. you on your blog, just post, post That'd something. Be great. Uh, David in Las Vegas has a great bug request, but perhaps we think with AdWords auto tagging. So thank you, David. Um, Desio in Sao Paulo had a question about uh, AdWords campaigns, conversions, Google Analytics, etc. It's a very complex question, and somebody would need to go in and dig and figure out what's going on. And so, uh, Desio, we encourage you to hire a GACP, a Google Analytics Authorized Consultant. Uh, they charge very little money, and, and they do very good work. Uh, Varun in Los Angeles had a feature request around counter visits. Varun, stay tuned. There's something exciting coming. I'm so excited, I can even tell you what it is. It's so exciting. Anyway, stay tuned. Uh, David from Vancouver had a question. We need a document, the, a one-stop shop that falls entirely in Nick's area. So Nick's going to work on that. I mean, somebody in Nick's massive team is going to work on that. Uh, Desio had another feature request connected to funnels. Uh, so we'll take that into account. Um, but also, Desio, uh, check out Party Track, which actually is from Brazil, if I remember it right. Um, Joris Peterman from Amsterdam had a question. Uh, connected to sharing segments, custom reports, etc. It is the thing I'm dying to have, and I have badgered film movie more than you can imagine. So hopefully we'll get that soon. Thank you, Jules. Um, Palmetto 274, Charleston, uh, South Carolina. I'm sorry, we can't answer your question with the information we have. Uh, get in touch with a Google Analytics authorized consultant, and they'll answer the question for you. Greg in San Francisco has a bar, possibly a, a bug. Um, that we will send to the Google Analytics team um, for Elisa in the French Alps. Uh, awesome area. Gren Grenoble? Grenoble, yeah. Grenoble. Our relatives who live there. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Family yeah. tree. Uh, get a gag. I'm sorry, GACP. We, we, we don't have enough information here. Uh, Johan from Melbourne has a great feature request connected to sharing. And, and the last one we had was from Jung um, at Tech Bargains. And, he had a question about comparing time periods. And Jung, I'm afraid that we don't quite understand your question, but you have my email address. 
Um, so perhaps email me a bit more context on what you're asking, and, and we'll get back to you uh, with a good answer. So and, and just to make a point, like we we went through a lot of these like bugs and features requests. Like we we're not just reading them here; we actually do give them to the product exactly. team. So so rest assured that they will hear them. They they do listen to Avinash. So they, <laughs> They at least read his emails, so uh, so the, your your feedback is getting sent to the right people too. Exactly. So with that, that's all we had time for today. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, we have the ninja of the episode. Yeah. That we're gonna uh, and in honor of Nick. No. The, it was a good question. Though. It was a great question. It's and not biased. Because it's holidays and feel good spirit and whatnot. Uh, the ninja of the episode is Maggie from Sofia in Bulgaria. It's a great question. And, and in Google Analytics, there are a lot of complex things sometimes that uh, throw people off. So Maggie, thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. Maggie, my email is very easy to find. So send me an email with your name, uh, full name address, uh, where you would like to sh uh, have our little present. And I'll sign a copy of Web Analytics 2.0, uh, and I'll send it to you. Um, so please, uh, please email me. And that's all we had, an exciting episode number Holiday 23. Holiday number 23, hopefully and, that was great. And, yeah. and we hope that you all have a very, very happy holidays with your family and have a fabulous 2012. See ya.